So as you can see, my children are not always silent. I told them to shh so we can do the video after all that singing was going on. But they're still there at the whiteboard. <clears throat> Mark can show you where the whiteboard is in comparison to me. They're over there. <laughs> and I told them shh so mommy can tape. So just so you think my kids are locked in a room all the time. Um, <laughs> they're not. Um, so we are making more Brazilian beans. I showed it on another video, but I'm gonna show it on this one too. I cut onion. This is one whole onion. It's a third of a package of kielbasa. It's however much garlic that is. I don't measure. And we're gonna add about a tablespoon of oil, about excess, to cook it in. There we go. So now we're just gonna cook this on high to sweat down the onion. I have my, my beans going in my crock pot over here with hot water, um, and we will add this to those beans. Oh, I didn't add quite enough oil, so we're gonna do that. So, I wanted to say on this video, I have gotten a lot of inspiration from certain people that I watch on YouTube, and because I'm making these videos for these wonderful folks, um, for you wonderful folks, not those wonderful folks, you wonderful folks, I'm missing out on watching my YouTube videos because usually while I'm standing in the kitchen chopping vegetables or washing dishes, which is usually what my husband, my husband usually washes the dishes, but um, if I happen to be washing them um, or doing my cooking, that's when I have a chance to watch YouTube videos. Um, so I haven't been able to watch them during this time because I've been making these videos for you guys. So I'm just going to mention some of the favorites of the shows that I like to watch. I like to watch Jamarell Stewart at Large Family Table. Um, and I just saw this morning that it looks like they might be moving. I haven't watched that video yet because I haven't had time, but um, that would be interesting to see where she's going. She does a lot of make-ahead meals that are either in the crock pot, you couldn't get him, <laughs> either in the crock pot or the freezer. Um, I'll go back to her in a second. If you see, he's carrying around a flag. We're very big into armies right now. And any little papers you see taped to me, I realized yesterday one was taped to me in my night video. Um, I'm, what am I today? I'm the captain today of the army. So um, <laughs> we have different people. Samuel, come here so they can see your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so <coughs> Samuel's a lieutenant. He has a little L on his. Everybody has different marks. So anyway, <laughs> so I like to watch Jamarelle Stewart. Um, she does a lot of cook-ahead freezer meals where she'll cook a whole month's worth of uh, suppers and put them in her um, freezer. She also has some gluten-free recipes. She has keto. Um, I don't I can't think of all of them, but you can get on her site and she also sells um, things where you can get all the recipes and everything. So I enjoy watching her. I enjoy watching Amanda Beal at the Fundamental Home. Um, she's actually who started me on liking to watch YouTube videos about people cooking and grocery hauls. Um, she has a video, How I Feed My Family for $100 a Month, that was when her kids were younger, the budget they had, and it's really interesting to see how she does that and how she does her meal planning. Um, who else do I like to watch? I have other people. Our Tribe of Many. Our Tribe of Many, Sarah on Our Tribe of Many. Her and her husband um, have 10, I think they just had their 10th, who is a beauty, and um, they do grocery hauls of their food um, and how they feed their family. And it's really interesting because she does once a month grocery. Um, I think Jamarelle does that too, but goes grocery shopping once a month and then just fills in with a small shopping trip in the middle for milk and vegetables. So that's interesting. And I also like to watch Amy Marion. She videotapes every day and um, just is very encouraging um, homemaker. So. We really enjoy hers. And so while we've been watching these different videos and we're trying to figure out exactly what we want to do with our channel, um, I just want to make sure that my videos are being glorifying to God and edifying you guys, not just showing you how to cook. Because it's great that you know how to cook and feed your family well, but what's most important in this world for me is that I'm glorifying God in everything I do and say. So while I stand here in the kitchen, um, I have multiple Bible verses that I can see from where I'm standing, but the one I'm going to talk about today is our brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, Mark's brother, sent us this big wall one that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That is in um, Joshua. I forget the number, which number it is. 24, 15, I believe. But it's talking about which 
which gods are you going to choose to serve? There, he's showing you the rest of our verses. Um, those ones I painted up there on the wall. We had to cover some marks. But, um, so as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He was discussing the different things that people were putting as gods before them and whether they were going to worship the one true God or they were going to put something ahead of God. And we've actually been reading that in um, Exodus because that's where we are in our Bible reading as a family. We read one, two, three chapters a day depending. It's been one recently because we're going through the law and it takes a while to explain out to the kids what the law means and everything. But God isn't worried about the other things that people make gods. He's not afraid they're going to take his power. We just listened to a good message by Bodhi Bauckham about this. Um, you know, God's not worried that the little piece of wood that you're worshiping is going to be bigger and better than him. God is in control. God knows all that. But our hearts are supposed to be turned towards God, not turned to these other things. And so he's giving us directions to keep him in focus. And while most of us don't have other little gods in our house that we're worshiping, like most people don't have carved images um, they're worshiping. Like, you know, people, most people don't have a goat sitting on their kitchen counter that they, you know, thank God every day for their food or anything like that. But we all do have things in our life that we put as more important than God. For some people, it's something silly, like a TV show. Like, that's more important to me. I'd rather go watch that with my friends on Wednesday night than go to prayer meeting. I'm not saying you have to go to prayer meeting to be a Christian, but I'm just saying that you'll put it in front of things you should be doing so that you can be watching the show. It is, in a form, a type of worship. When you are adjusting your schedule to do something that is outside of God, then it's becoming a God to you. I can't say in another person's life what is their God, but if you're neglecting the things God has commanded you to do, something is more important to you than God. I'm going to turn this down a little bit while we talk. Um, <clears throat> so, for some people, it's sports. They're willing to <clears throat> miss church or miss family devotions, um, miss reading their own Bible, um, because they want to be out doing this sport or they want to be watching this sport. For some people, they make a God of their family. And they put more emphasis into that than they put into God. For our family, we do our Bible study all together in the mornings as a family. I know different family schedules work differently, and ours, because my husband is home, we can do our Bible study in the morning, which is when my husband has the least trouble with his neurological problems. So we're able to um, have him lead the Bible study almost every day. But you guys want to see what I'm doing. We're just getting the I need to cook a little bit. This is almost done. But we're able to do that as a family. But if we decide to neglect the Bible study so that we can just spend time as a family every day, so that we can go do things as a family, then we're putting the wrong priorities on things. People can also make a God of their marriage. As much as I love my husband and he does things for me and he, you know, we're made to be one flesh, as God has said in the Bible, I can't rely on him to fulfill all my emotional, spiritual, even physical needs. That's what God is. And if I'm not complete in God, I can't be the spouse that I'm supposed to be for my husband. Because if I'm expecting my husband to fill those gaps that I have, um, it means that I'm not letting God take control of my life like he should. So while I can talk to my husband about some difficulty we're having or some communication issue we're having or whatever it is, um, I need to know that he's only a human too and he's a sinner, um, as we all are. Yes, you are a sinner, Mark. <laughs> I am, I admit it. He's behind the camera. Um, but we, um, we need to know that another person isn't going to fill those things in our life. So I guess this is just a challenge today to look at what things are keeping you from doing the things God has commanded you to do. Um, the Bible talks about a lot of things that we should be doing. Um, some churches focus way too much on the things we should not be doing. Like some churches say, you should not dance. You should not drink alcohol. You should not do, should not wear pants. You should not whatever. Like, I'm not saying those things are biblical, okay? Um, I would actually say those things aren't specified in the Bible. 
Um, but there's not many churches focus on the things you should be doing. You should be loving your neighbor. You should be instructing your children in the things of the Lord. You should be loving your husband. You should be loving your children. You should be working, like making, being a worker at your home, being a keeper of home. You should be sober-minded. You should be all these things. And when you look at the list of shoulds, you don't have a whole lot of time to do the should nots. Um, while I'm not saying dancing is a bad thing, I don't have a whole lot of time for dancing because I'm spending a lot of time doing those other things. Not that I'm doing them perfectly, but I'm spending time every day instructing my children. I'm spending time loving my husband. Um, so it's kind of like with a diet. If on a diet you're told you can't have chocolate, you suddenly become very obsessed with eating chocolate. But if instead you're told on the diet you can have all the fruit you want, you can have the vegetables, here's a recipe for this fruit tart, here's a recipe for you know, this smoothie, you aren't going to feel deprived of the chocolate because you're thinking of all the wonderful things you can have. And if as Christians we think of all of the things that we can do to serve God, we won't be so focused on the world and the things that we feel we're missing out on because we're Christians. So I hope that that helped someone today. I don't know. <laughs> but if you um, see, the onions are getting kind of translucent. Um, I don't mind that they still have a little bit of a crunch, so I'm going to take this off the heat and add it to the beans and let them cook until lunchtime. And we'll be back then. Okay, so we're trying a new recipe. It's a caramel sauce that we're going to put on our apples. So just because you're eating for cheap doesn't mean you have to eat just plain Jane food. So this is on the website, the spruce eats, the spruce, like the tree, eats.com. And so I'm trying this recipe. And so in the pan, I have water and sugar. And I'm going to mix it up. It says that I can mix it until it gets to a boil, and then I'm supposed to stop mixing it because the caramel will get grainy. Um, to make things easier on your family, it's nice to have treats once in a while. So, I'm going to let that go. I will tell you what. So, I'm supposed to gather all the ingredients. I'm supposed to put the sugar and the water in a small saucepan. Place the saucepan over medium-high heat. And place the lid over the saucepan. But it said to stir it first, so that's what I did. I'm going to close it. Once the water has come to a rolling boil, remove the lid. Do not stir the caramel after this point, otherwise you run the risk of it becoming green. So I'm going to cook it until it's a golden brown color. Golden brown. So it says if it's cooking unevenly, swirl the pan. So i got to wait for it to get to a boil. But while we wait for it to get to a boil, you might hear the kids in the background. The girls are going to go read books to the kids while we um, do this video. And then they have an Uno tournament going on. We are waiting um, for Uriah, two-year-old, to go to sleep. And we have my nephew over here visiting today with my mom. Um, so my mom is out holding the baby, and they're reading books to each other. But we're going to try to make this yummy sauce because we're going to eat it on apples for our afternoon snack. And I'm sure somebody or a few somebodies are going to sneak some pieces of bread to use this on too. So I'm just going to check it. It's boiling. Not yet. You don't want to cook sugar at too high of a temperature because it'll scorch it. And... I don't want to waste any of my ingredients. But this recipe, you can do it with cream, you can do it with half and half, um, but I found a variation that uses milk. And so since I have milk in this um, game plan, um, just so everybody knows, we've had a small change in the $75 budget. Um, nothing big, but we were discussing some stuff last night, looking at our ingredients. I planned all the meals, depending what was said on the package was in the container. And some of them, the measurements have not come up exactly right. So you might see us on the last day of the challenge eating something that's from my pantry because it doesn't work. I also added one stick of butter that I had in my pantry, well, in my fridge, my other fridge, to the um, budget because my mom is going to be here having a snack with us and stuff today. And so um, she joined us for lunch, which our beans and rice spread enough, but we're going to be having a snack here this afternoon, which is going to include some butter. And so I'm adding that because we're feeding these other people. So I'm just keeping it very real with you. There are 
certain things we do that would make changes to this, but we have found some recipes we really like, and I am going to be pricing out everything. We priced out, I don't have the list with me right now, but we priced out the Brazilian beans that we had today for lunch. Um, I forgot to videotape with all the chaos going on around here, but priced out those Brazilian beans, and they came out to, I think, $2.47 for four cups of rice to go with the pan of Brazilian beans, the amount that we ate, which is one pound of beans plus the ingredients and stuff. So that's a pretty cheap meal. Um, even if I added bacon, that would still be a pretty cheap meal. So I'm looking at this. This is starting to boil, so I'm just going to swirl it so that it doesn't stick. Um, so yeah, we would make some changes. And as I go through, I'm also going to do the price breakdowns and tell you some of the stuff that I would buy in bulk as I was able to um, work on my pantry, because I was doing this as a, this is what you have in your pantry. Um, you don't have a pantry yet and to build your pantry. I think the first thing I would do um, if I was going to do another week of this is I would buy yeast. In bulk um, because that is what I'm seeing right now the biggest money saver being able to make your own bread um, is helps you spread your food so much further so I think I'd say buy yeast in bulk your first week if you spent five dollars at Sam's Club you could buy a whole lot of yeast even if you spent five dollars on one of the little jars at the store you'd still be able to buy a whole lot more yeast at a cheaper price and again I will price that out um, the next week trying to build my pantry, instead of buying a 10 pound bag of flour and a five pound bag of flour, I would buy a 25 pound bag of flour. Um, it works out cheaper per unit price, but again, if you only have a certain amount of dollars, um, you might not be able to do that. But I think that would be the second biggest money saver in all of this. I'm trying to think what else I would add. I would add more fruit and veggies if we were doing this again. Um, my family loves fruit and veggies and we're used to having them with every meal. Um, I mean, like beans, I know they're not officially a vegetable, but you are getting a lot of nutrients and minerals from them um, instead of just eating like sugar and stuff all the time while I'm here making sugar on the stove. So I'm waiting for it to get to a golden caramel color. Um, but I would use a cheap budget like this to be able to next week say, okay, I was able to buy these ingredients, plus I have $10 to put towards a bulk buy. A bulk buy. Also being able to find something on sale. So um, like this week I found hamburger is three dollars or two ninety nine a pound at our local store. Um, I will be going and buying some. I won't be using it during this week, but I'm buying it to put in the freezer so that I'll have it other weeks so that when we do want hamburger, I'm not spending four or five dollars a pound for the hamburger. I'm spending three dollars a pound for the hamburger. Same with um, pasta. It's seventy nine cents a box right now which normally it's only a dollar, so that's 21 cents. But if you do that five times, that's another dollar you have to add to something. And as I found in this low spend challenge, a dollar is most of a dozen bag of bucks of a dozen eggs, or a dollar, you know, is most of a bag of flour. So you really do save money, even if it's just 20 cents at a time. So this is starting to get darker. I don't know if I can show it on the video because I don't have someone doing the camera, but it's starting to get darker. So we're going to let it keep going. I'm not going to stir it, like I said. The next ingredient, um, so it says do not stir at this point. Cook it until it becomes a golden brown color. That's what I'm doing. And then I'm going to take it off the heat and whisk in butter. So I'm going to cut the butter while I wait for that. You only need a tablespoon of butter. Oh, by the way, we made banana bread last night with a new recipe. The recipe did not take any oil or butter, and it did not take any milk, and it was still really, really good. So, we will share the pricing of that video very soon. It's starting to get darker. I thought this would be a yummy treat to go with our snack. So, um, you're seeing my real life kitchen. We just finished some lunch. That was our beans. I put the beans in the crock pot this morning, and because of some grumpy attitudes, I wanted to be able to eat lunch sooner than we normally do. So they went from the crock pot into a pot to finish cooking the last, I don't know, 40 minutes or so, um, because I just wanted to make sure they were done so that we could eat. We also had rice with that. So 
today so far, banana bread, I mean, rice and beans. But we will have caramel soon. Very, very soon. So we are back. You just heard them asking, it's like, you know, we had the camera off for maybe three minutes. And I think it's a golden brown color that they would want, or that I would want. So I'm going to add one tablespoon of butter. And it says to incorporate that. get to that in a little bit. I'm making a double recipe of soup today. So this is going to be two meals worth. 
In this pan, I have some more just broth, nice and bubbly and hot. And I saved some flour from the other night when I made noodles. And we're gonna add it to some water. And we're going to make some gravy to thicken up our soup. So we're gonna take the flour and mix it with water. To this broth, I added a little bit of salt and pepper already. That was the only thing that's been added. And so I'm just mixing up the water and flour. And then I'm gonna slowly add it. And it's going to thicken up the broth. Because for chicken and biscuits, you want the broth to be slightly thicker. It just gives it a better consistency. You're kind of making a chicken pot pie with biscuits as a topper instead of pie crust as a topper. So then you just let this cook till it thickens up a little bit. So you want it to get back to a boil and then you'll cook it for a few minutes. Okay, so I was mixing this up so we now have gravy that's slightly thicker and more flavorful um, because I cooked out some of that extra water. So we're going to combine this with the soup that is cooking that has the vegetables in it. And then for this recipe, I'm going to use this pan while it's still dirty. We are going to put the soup with the cooked vegetables. Oh. Before I do anything, I need to add the chicken. Here's our leftover chicken. It's been going in all the meals. Cooked for yesterday when we forgot. So we still have more of this in the meals for the next few days, but that's what was left in that bowl. So we're going to stir that up. And we're going to put about half of this into this pan. And this is what we're going to add the biscuits to that she just made. That is the oven preheating for the biscuits. That oven is set at 425. So I just want to get about half of this soup. Because I already had a dirty pan, I figured I'd use this pan. You can also do it in like a 9x13. Um, depending on how big of a batch you're making, you could do it in 8x8 eight eight if you're doing a smaller family. So when Virginia's ready, take one scoop out. Okay. So we have half in this pan, half for tomorrow. I'm turning off that heat. You're coming over to get your biscuits. Sorry, a little dancing in the kitchen around this. We're not used to working around this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold on. I'm going to put okay. this down onto the oven first okay. so that we don't spill it. So if she just adds them while it's here, then we have less likely chance to spill it. So she broke, she mixed that up and broken it into 16 pieces. And she's dropping the 16 pieces into the hot soup. The key is having it hot so that they don't absorb as much liquid. They stay more towards the top. They'll rise up to the top as they cook. Some of them are a little more shaped than others, but I, mm -hmm. she got called away to help with a kid in the midst of this. <laughs> don't burn yourself. And it doesn't matter exactly how they're put on there. So then we're going to push it into the oven. And we'll show you in a magic camera time when it's done. Okay, so camera magic, we're back again. We put this in the oven last time. In here. My glasses are all horrible. So today is day four of our seven day food challenge, $75. I explained this morning that we had made some banana bread last night, which is what we ate this morning. Um, it was very good, and I will share that um, recipe breakdown at the end of the week. So we did banana bread this morning. We did um, beans and rice for lunch, which was the Brazilian beans that the family really enjoys. And then for supper tonight, we're doing this chicken and biscuits.
I hope you join us for the next three days. We've been enjoying this challenge and we've got some more plans of some yummy snacks to make over the next couple days. Before we go away, I want to mention, I made the caramel before, you'll see it on the video. Neither attempt came out great. This is what consistency this one came out with and do not blame the recipe, I think it's the cook. But this is really yummy, just like this. So. <laughs> And the other one that didn't turn out well, the first one that I didn't cook long enough, we're going to use as our sweetener for oatmeal one of these days coming up. So neither of them were a waste, but um, a fun learning experience. So I hope you come back for the rest of the challenge, the rest of the days of the challenge. We've got three more days. We will do a price breakdown and tell you how everything has worked out on the schedule. And I will just show you how our dinner looks tonight. So it's just biscuits. There is our supper.